ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and one of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. It has been three weeks that I've, uh, since I last missed an episode, so we're coming up on a month here and it's all fucking going well. That being said, okay, all right, it's, uh, it, it, it is the end times for me. It's the end. I'm, I will be cancelled, okay? It's happening. Every comedian that's ever told a fucking joke, every cunt on the planet that's ever made a joke about any type of person is getting cancelled now, okay? Jenna Marbles just got fucking cancelled, yeah? Jenna fucking Marbles. The bitch who makes uh, funny videos with her silly dogs, is over. The OG YouTuber Jenna Marbles, probably one of the most genuinely good people on the fucking website, is over. She quit YouTube because of Twitter. Can we just delete the Twitter? You know what Twitter needs? It needs a fucking dislike button. That's what it fucking needs. No, don't, don't let people hide replies. Don't force people further into a fucking echo chamber. We need a dislike button. That kept you. That keeps it keeps YouTube sane. Having a dislike button keeps cunts in check. If I do something fucking crazy, I know because my dislike bars will be red. All right. Now everybody knows that what I'm saying makes a lot of sense because everyone's gonna like this on fucking YouTube, right? We need a dislike button for Twitter. We, okay, here's how we fix the world. One, dislike button for Twitter, okay? So that we can let all of these fucking idiots know when they say something crazy, they're going to get ratioed, all right? Because it's not enough anymore. We, people have given up. All of the sane people are done arguing with the crazy cunts on Twitter. Whenever I see something dumb, something outrageously dumb, like when someone goes, oh, two plus two is five, and if you don't agree with me, I'm going to chop your head off, and we're going to dox you, find out where you live, and tell your employer. If you don't say two plus two equals five, we're going to ruin your fucking life. Now when I see that shit, before, I might have written a reply going, hey, maybe, maybe it's four. I don't do that anymore because I know I'm next. Now when I see cunts go 2 plus 2 is 5 on Twitter, coming up with some insane fucking opinion, treating it as a fact and destroying the lives of people who don't even really disagree, just don't agree enough. Now when I see that shit, I used to maybe say, hey, have you thought about this? I don't do that anymore. I just go, well, that cunt's life is over <laughs> because I'm, I'm bored. I'm done of it. I can't, I, I think that most sane people on this planet are done, like, uh, providing anything productive to the fucking Twitter. Twitter. It's over. So what we need is a dislike button so that all of us low effort normal cunts can just go, wow, that's crazy, dislike. Twitter needs a fucking dislike button because it will keep the whole website in check. Whether you're, whether you're some crazy right-wing cunt or some crazy left-wing person trying to cancel people, you're talking about masks being evil, dislike button will sort those cunts out. I can't believe YouTube is talking about getting rid of the dislike button. Why? Have you ever seen the dislike button, like, used in a bad way for a long time? Sure, all these fucking makeup gurus are going to cop it every now and then when they get exposed, when someone spills some tea. But let's be real. They own multiple houses and are millionaires. They'll be fine, okay? I don't think the dislike button is causing much distress to anyone other than cunts wearing too much makeup, making too much money. Look, Jenna Marbles has been cancelled. It's, it's, it's over for me. I've accepted that. Jenna Marbles is done. I'm next, you know? All these fucking jokes I've told... They're coming for me next. The minute they find out about Spearhead Sundays, it is over. I mean, I don't know what they're going to take from me because the only thing that I have is you guys and people support and you supporting me on Patreon. So I, I don't think it's going to have any effect on me. But somebody like Jenna Marble, she's quit YouTube over fucking cunts on Twitter. And you know what? I agree. Jenna Marbles is a terrible racist person. It's pretty evident if you have a look at her fucking content from... 10 years ago that she deserves to be cancelled. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read out exactly what Jenna Marbles said to get her cancelled. 
And I want you to know that even Jenna Marbles was cancelled over this. So what I'm about to say, now it's fine for me to say it because I'm quoting Jenna Marbles. So I'm not a racist. What I'm going to say is I'm going to quote Jenna Marbles for what she was cancelled for. And I want you to know that this was so racist, so unfunny, so disgusting, that if you laugh at what I'm about to say, you're a racist. I I can't be any more clear. I'm going to say what got Jenna Marbles cancelled. And if you laugh at it, just know that you deep down inside your soul are a racist. And you're going to have to admit that on Twitter and the mob will come for you. This is not funny. What I'm about to say is not funny. It's racist. And if you laugh, you are a racist person. This is what got Jenna Marbles cancelled. And if you laugh, you're a racist. It's not funny. Don't you dare laugh. Because if you laugh, (laughs) this isn't funny. If you laugh at this, you are a terrible person. This is what got Jenna Marbles cancelled. If you laugh, you're a racist. Now remember, don't you laugh or you're done. Okay? This is what got her cancelled. Hey there, Ching Chong. Show me your King Kong Wing Wong. (laughs) Now, now if you laughed at that, you're a racist. It's over for you. Okay? You're not allowed. And and you need to be honest. If you laughed at that, you got to put your hand up, go straight to Twitter and say, hey, guys, take me. I'm done. I'm one of the bad guys. You know, I laughed at a fucking Ching Chong Wing Wong King Kong joke from 10 years ago. Take me. I'm, I'm evil. I'm a bad person. I'm enforcing white superiority upon the masses. Take me, I'm done. There is nothing funny about someone yelling, hey, Ching Chong, show me your King Kong wing wong, and I'm going to tell you why. On the surface, (laughs) that might seem a little bit funny. Okay? Why? Because it rhymes, all right? Because Ching Chong rhymes with wing wong, and so does... King Kong, okay? Now, that might seem funny to you, but I'm going to tell you why it's racist, okay? Chinese people, you shouldn't be saying Ching Chong. That's racist, okay? Now, you also shouldn't be bringing King Kong into it, all right? That's American culture. If anything, you got to say Godzilla, okay? It would be... It wouldn't be completely fine, but it would be less racist if you said, hey, Ching Chong, show me your Godzilla wing wong. But if you laughed at what I just said, then you are a racist. Now, I'm not racist because I'm purely quoting a racist. This is not this is not comedy. I'm not trying to be funny. I am merely reporting the facts just like any other journalist would. For some reason, if you're a journalist, you're allowed to repeat terrible things that other people say. But if, if anybody else does, you're a racist. Now, can I just, can I be any more clear? If you laugh at the thing that I'm saying now, you're a bad person, even if you're Asian, especially if you're Asian, you've got internalized racism, okay? I don't want you to be laughing at, hey, Ching Chong, show me a King Kong Wing Wong. That is bad. That's not good. That's <laughs> that's not funny at all, okay? And if you laughed at it, you're going to have to resign now, all right? What would make it less racist would be if she said, hey, Ching Chong, show me a Godzilla Wing Wong. Okay. The world is on fire. You know what's happened? All of these cunts are so angry about fucking Black Lives Matter as they should be, right? They're so angry about the police brutality and all this kind of shit, but they can't be fucked protesting anymore. They can't be fucked actually changing things that matter. Oh, protesting. I'd rather stay in and tweet at a fucking YouTuber who did shit 10 years ago. Writing my congressman, boring, tweeting a gif of K-pop cunts dancing. That's fun. That's creating positive social change. Hey, you're not. You're making everyone hate each other. 
Canceling a fucking YouTuber over shit they said a decade ago is insane. Especially because they haven't done anything like that for fucking years. I have come for me. Dude, I don't I honestly don't think there is anything funnier than Jenna Marbles seriously pulling up her own video where she said, and with a deadpan face where she played her, I got to fucking play it. I need to fucking play that shit. I don't think I've laughed harder during any YouTuber apology in my life. Let me find this shit. She's fucking crying and apologizing. Jenna Marbles apology. I don't think I've laughed harder at all in... This is a fucking 11 minute video of her fucking crying. All right, where is it? Okay, so she's pulling up the thing. Where is it? Is this this music level? Okay, dude. So so here she is apologizing to the fucking mob. The dumbest shit any entertainer could do. Apologizing to the mob is the dumbest shit ever. Never do that. We'll get to that, right? But he, here, the, the, she is being serious here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a serious person. In case you haven't noticed, I'm just going back a little bit. This video is called Bounce That Dick. This has also been made private. Uh, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in making anyone feel bad. In case you haven't noticed. Um, here's a clip. I That's all she has to say. I don't want to offend anyone. The next part of that sentence ends with, but it's impossible not to. I don't want to offend anyone. I don't, it's not a good feeling when I'm trying to make cunts laugh and people get offended. I don't like that. If any entertainer says they like offending people, they're, they're lying. It's not good. No one likes, no one tries to offend people. If you go out there and your only intention is to offend people, you're a fucking asshole. That being said, I know ev just about every fucking joke I tell will offend someone. But I also know that what I'm saying is fucking real life funny. The shit I talk about is real. I'll say something about any fucking group and I'll make people laugh. But I know that some people, most of the time, who are not from that fucking group, are going to get angry about it on their behalf. But that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make because this is the type of shit that I want to create. And I know that I've created a giant fucking fan base of people who feel very similarly. Right? So you... Just because you have offended someone doesn't mean you're a bad person. You need to judge on the person's intent, not your interpretation of what they made. Anyway, right? Sorry, I get. I hate that shit. I never want to offend anyone. That and that's all you got to say. You don't have to apologize. You say I didn't mean to offend you, but if you did, that's on you. Welcome to the fucking internet. All right. Anyway. So this is a serious person. I don't want to offend anyone. I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in making anyone feel bad. In case you haven't noticed. Um, here's the clip. I will play it for you. Here. Hold on. Let me remind you. So as you can see, I said, hey, Ching Chong Wing Wong. Shake your King Kong ding dong. <laughs> Bro, I don't know how the fuck she delivered that with a straight face. Okay, how can you say that without laughing? That's the most fucking ridiculous shit. If anyone takes that seriously, you're a fucking moron. That is, you couldn't get any clearer that that's a joke. Hey, Ching Chong, Wing Wong, shake your King Kong ding dong. Is that really what we need to stand up against? Is that the fucking line? There are cops out there killing black people in the fucking street 
and we've forgotten about that shit already. We want to yell at some YouTuber that said, hey, Ching Chong, Wing Wong, show us your King Kong ding dong. Are you fucking kidding me? That's awesome. The world's great. So as you can see, I said, hey, Ching Chong, Wing Wong, <coughs> shake your King Kong ding dong. That's awesome. Sorry, that was racist. I'm bad at rap songs. <laughs> I mean, she already apologized. She apologized immediately after she said it. What do you want? She built the apology into the joke. You couldn't get any safer than that. That's the fu- that's that's great. She already apologized for it in the fucking song. Cunts are canceling her. So if you're telling me that in this. They were able to recognize that the apology was not to be taken seriously, but the joke had to be taken seriously? I'm sorry, you can't have both. It's in the same fucking line. She built the apology into the joke. You can't take half of the joke seriously. That's not how it works. Either you go, oh, obviously it was a fucking joke. She's not a racist person. Or you take the whole thing seriously, including the apology. It's like, oh, it's all sweet. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build I'm gonna build in apologies into my jokes. Hey guys, sorry for saying Ching Chong Wing Wong. That's so awesome. Exists. It's inexcusable. It's not okay. I'm I'm incredibly sorry if this offended you. Then, now, whenever. It doesn't need to exist. It shouldn't have existed. I shouldn't have said that. Ever. I mean, look, it also, I, I, look, I'm not, I'm not, now, now that I've stood up for Jenna, look, let's be real. It wasn't a funny joke. I'm saying that her saying it seriously while apologizing, that's that joke paying off. That's the funniest that joke ever got was her sitting down with no makeup on and seriously saying, I am, I am very sorry for saying, hey, Ching Chong. Wing Wong, show us your King Kong ding dong. It'll never happen again. That is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. I don't know how she said it. She might have powers. Okay? That's just funny. And you know what? If you've made it 18 minutes into this episode and you're sending out your tweets, suck me from the back. I'm going to keep going. All right? This shit is insane. You know what it is? It's people who have a le- who are legitimately angry about real shit, real issues, but instead of actually putting any effort into changing the system or changing actually racist things or or building a better life for disadvantaged people, instead of doing that, they're just directing their ang- anger at the easiest fucking target, which is some bitch on YouTube who's been making shit for 10 years. Dude, I can't remember what I said at the start of this podcast. You think you're going to hold me account? You hold- you're going to hold me accountable for shit I said 10 years ago? Dude, I don't know what I said at the start of this podcast. I don't know what I had for breakfast. I, dude, the minute I start recording, I'm Joe Biden. <laughs> I got hairy legs. What, what did I just say? Can't remember. I'm Joe Biden. That's, it's just people that are angry, but instead of doing anything to affect positive change, they're instead directing that anger at, at just nothing. Some chick who made a fucking YouTube video. I mean, it's like this Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel shit. Who is, who's cancelled? Is it Jimmy Fallon or Kimmel? I don't know. I think it's Fallon. He did, he did the blackface thing. Now, look, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I don't think you should be doing blackface now. Uh, but also, Tropic Thunder is still fucking awesome. And if it was made today, I would stand by it. So maybe, look, I would say 95% of the time you shouldn't be doing blackface okay unless you can come up with it with the most creative ingenu- in- ingenuitive way to to be funny and it needs blackface then i guess i guess you, look i'm saying now in today's time i don't think you need blackface to impersonate a black person you can dress like them you can talk like them let's just give them the blackface thing okay they've won that and it, mainly because it doesn't make a joke more funny. You know what I mean? Like some, it's like, you know, sometimes I'll cut a swear word because it doesn't make the joke more funny. 
You know, it just makes it more offensive or less palatable. If I cut some words out, cut out some grossness, it'll be funnier. I feel like that with blackface, right? But clearly, right, if you have a look at how many fucking celebrities, regular people who have been to parties and all that kind of shit, how many of them did blackface? Can we at least acknowledge that there was a period in time where cunts just did it and we've now moved on from that? And as long as they're not doing it today, it's fine, right? And as long as when they did it, they didn't do it to be racist. Their intention was not to be. If someone dons blackface and goes, look at me, I'm a black person, aren't they dumb? Fuck that guy. That's a racist person. But if someone like Jimmy Kimmel or Fallon or whichever the fuck one's being cancelled is doing it just to impersonate a famous black person who they admire and is doing their best effort at an impression and to look like them, I don't think it's racist, right? But let's say, okay, it is. Why are we only cancelling the fucking comedian? Who do you think did that shit on Saturday Night Live? It was just him. It's not YouTube, all right? If I say some fucked up shit, you know whose fault it is? Me. A hundred percent me, right? And maybe a little bit of Keelan because he didn't go, are you sure about that, all right? You know, like I like I feel like uh, my relationship with Keelan is if I started vlogging a, a dead guy who hung himself in a forest, he would at least go, "Are you sure about that?" And that's and then if I ignore it, that's on me. <laughs> but if I, but if he never says that, there's a little bit of responsibility there, okay? But that's as far as it goes. Now, if I work for Saturday Night Live right? A place where they have a right, like multiple writing rooms with black people, white people, Asian people, people of all colors, creeds, and races, and, and 30 people write one sketch and they decide to give it to me because I do the, the best impression of this black person. And then the fucking makeup team decides, oh, let's do, let's do like, let's really make him look like this guy, right? And then, and then everyone runs this sketch and the script and the makeup past multiple executives because they have to do that. And all of the fucking executive directors and creative leads of the show go, yes, this is okay. Why the fuck does only one person get in trouble? Why does it all fall on the one guy who did it, who was early in his career, who was probably saying yes to everything because that's what you have to fucking do in entertainment. If you don't say yes to everything, you will never make it when, you know, when you're earlier. Now I can say no to shit because I'm at a position where, you know, I, I just fucking, I just bought toys and wrote it off as a tax expense because it's going on my shelf. That's where I'm at in life, okay? I'm not killing it, but I can afford my fucking rent. And I just bought some toys and wrote it off on tax. So I'm not killing it, but I won't lie if I didn't say this wasn't my teenage fucking dream to be here. But when I started out, I was saying yes to fucking everything. If there was Saturday Night Live in Australia, I would have done that shit. I'm trying to pay my fucking rent. You don't want to be the guy who gets to work and it's like, oh, sorry, I'm not going to do that one. And then five black guys in the writing room going, nah, it's all good, man. We wrote the sketch. You can do it. Like, do you really think that zero black people had any hand in that? All of those impressions of Chris Rock. Do you really think Chris Rock was angry about that shit? I don't think so. Otherwise, he would have fucking said. It's crazy to me that only the comedian takes the fall. Not the people who wrote it. Not the people who cleared it. Not the people who did the makeup. Not the executives who aired it. Not Saturday Night Live who have uh, been making money off all of that old shit up until now. Because Twitter's mad. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Um, and if you laughed at hey Ching Chong Wing Wong Show as your King Kong Ding Dong, you're a racist. And, th- and if you're laughing now, double racist. And you need to be double cancelled. You're going to have to quit your job and the next job you get, you're going to have to quit that too. Sorry, that's how the world works now. If you laugh at something that uh, becomes unacceptable, not even that is unacceptable from the moment of its inception, if you laugh at it, At the time, it was fine. Today, you're done. Because people can't change. Everybody knows that. No such thing as a person who changes, you know. If you go to prison and you do your time and you go through the reforming 
uh, fucking program and you come out the other side, sorry, you are still whatever the fuck you did. You can never change. That's how it works, huh? It's insane. It's all of these cunts who were just bored in quarantine. White women couldn't let shit not be about them for two weeks, all right? It was Black Lives Matter for two weeks. Well, sorry, guys, it's about white women again. Yeah, they, had to, they took the back seat for two weeks, but now it's about white chicks. That's what it's about. It's about white chicks again. The world is finally in balance. We must only care about white lady problems. And that brings me to the allegations against Chris D'Elia. I'm going to go down for this. Um, no, nah, nah, I'm actually not going to defend him that much. Look. Here's what I will say. Looking very bad for Chris. I'm not going to call him a pedophile because to the best of my knowledge, I've been looking at this uh, and it seems like I don't see any evidence of him fucking a child. Uh, that being said, I see a lot of fucking creepy shit. Uh, and, and what I think now is I think there's that one. You know, I think with Chris, the worst is yet to come. That's what it seems like at the minute. Now, when it first all started coming out about Chris D'Elia, all these allegations, right? Okay, I'll get you up to speed. It seems like Chris likes very young women, barely legal. Like the minute you hit 18, you might get an email from Chris D'Elia. Now, that's not illegal, but I also think it's kind of sus, you know? It's like that. It's Some comedian had a joke about minimum wage, uh, if you pay someone the minimum wage, it's like you're saying, hey, if I could legally pay you less, I would. The same is true of old dudes who fuck 18-year-old girls. It's like, man, if I could fuck younger chicks, I would, but this is the law, so this is what I have to fuck, unfortunately. That's what it seems like to me. Of, I mean, yes, he's following the law, however... It's a little bit fucking sus that there were many, many emails started by Chris where the girls were underage and those conversations, right? It's fine to like younger women as long as they're obviously over 18. When I say, when I say younger women from now on, I mean fucking over 18. It's fine to like younger women, right? But if you're into that, especially if you're an older dude, and you like chicks who are 18, 19, here's how every conversation has to start. This is the beginning of every one of your conversations. If you're into 18, 19 year old chicks and you're a 30 something year old dude, this is how your conversations have to start. Hello, how old are you? No, not even that, before hello. How old are you? Hello, <laughs> that's how it has to start. Show me your ID, good evening. That's how your conversation have to start. If you're into young chicks, 18, 19, that's fine. But your conversations must start with, show me your driver's license. Good morning. That's how they start. You know, that's how they have to start. Chris is none of them that I've seen started with that. It started with flirting and then got into age. That is sus. To me, that's sus. It's not illegal and he's not a pedophile, but that's sus. Another sus thing I saw was him emailing chicks, finding out they're 16, 17, and then going, oh, you're too young. Now that is great. Love that. Love that. Oh, sorry. You're under 18. I'm out of here. What is very sus <laughs> is... Him coming back a few months later and going, hey, you're 18 now. Let's hang out. Sus. Now, that's not grooming. Grooming to me is staying in constant contact with an underage person until they hit 18 and then fucking, that's like preparing them. If you hit them up and then you disconnect and then you come back months later, it's not grooming. It is sus, right? On the plus side, you know, I, I don't know how he does that shit. I can't remember my own girlfriend's birthday. I've been with her for eight years. It was our anniversary last week. Eight years. And her birthday a few days before that. I almost forgot it. 
This cunt's out there remembering birthdays of 16-year-old chicks he emailed two years ago. Sus. Um... I, what, but, okay, so what I think is, I think at the moment, I'm not prepared to completely throw Delia in the bin. I will say, very creepy behavior. I don't think he's a pedophile, but I also think this. I think, judging by all of his comedian friends dropping him, the management dropping him, and all of these people who know him intimately, distancing and pulling away and going, whoa, what the fuck? I think there is that one, you know what I mean, that we haven't seen yet. There's that one sitting there that maybe some people know about. Maybe Chris has gone, hey, you know, at the moment it's all good, but you might want to distance because I think the nuke might be coming. I think there might be that one that makes everyone go, whoa, I shouldn't have defended him. Fuck, didn't know about that. But we'll see. It's a it's a developing situation, you know. Poor cunt. You know he really he really uh, dug himself in a hole, huh, dude? If you're into like just eighteen year old chicks, look, don't play a pedophile twice. Don't even do it once. Hey, you know what? If Netflix comes to you and they want you to play a pedophile, say no. Okay. Just say, no thanks. I don't want millions of people thinking that I'm a pedophile. I'm not, I, that's not, I, that's not what I want to get typecast as, you know? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger was worried about getting typecast as a villain because he kept doing so many villainous roles. Chris Lee is out here getting typecast as a pedophile. Oh, we need a pedophile to do, uh, we need someone to, to pretend to be a pedophile. Who do we have? I'm like, oh, Delia looks like a fucking sex pest. Let's get him, you know? It's uh man it's it's a, it's a tricky one dude because I mean, I mean look there's a legal age for a reason right there's a legal age for a reason so you can't exactly call someone who fucks 18 year old chicks uh, a pedo uh, but I don't know just hitting people up that 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 l- clearly here's what I think it looks like to me the guy was hitting up girls who he thought looked under 18, but hopefully were over 18. It seems like that's what he was into. Chicks that were legal, but looked like they weren't, you know? Which, I mean, look, on one hand, I think that's creepy as fuck. On the other hand, you go on Pornhub, that's like the most popular category in the world. So there must be a lot of cunts on Twitter looking at that shit going, what a fucking creeper, logging on logging on Pornhub and then hitting that category. That's not my shit. I'm not into that. But there are clearly a lot of people that are. Um... I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> so, uh, is what I think is, I think he's a creep. Whether or not he uh, is doing illegal things in my head is yet to be confirmed, but is looking pretty likely. Uh, that being said, now that I've. Uh, Stood stood with the victims, and if it is true, fuck him. If it's not true, sorry, Chris. <laughs> uh, but it's looking like it's true, so uh, I'm going to put in a tented... I'm going to pencil in a fuck him, right? Pencil in a Delia in the bin, okay? Now, that being said, um, hey, women who are 20 years old on Twitter posting screenshots of emails of him hitting on you after you hit him, hit him up first... Shut the fuck up. Have some water. Have a glass of water, bitch. You have not been taken advantage of. That's the shit that made me go, this is all bullshit at the start. Now I don't think that. But at the start when it was all coming out, there was like one 17-year-old chick and then there was another fucking 17-year-old chick and you couldn't find those cases because there were 35,000 19 to 25 year old women posting their stories. Bitch, you emailed him first. You're an adult. Have some water. You nothing happened. 
Yeah, as long as it was consensual, which all that shit that I was reading, it was fucking consensual. All these fucking idiots posting stories about, oh my God, this happened to me too. I messaged Chris D'Elia, and then he messaged me back, and then I went to his hotel at 3 a.m. and we had sex. Oh my God. You haven't been taken advantage of. That's consensual sex. Just because some cunt is famous doesn't mean he can't fuck anyone. That's insane to me. I think that... Obviously, you shouldn't be fucking, like, stan accounts or people that go to every one of your shows. I have fans like that. You know, girls that come to every one of my shows. You know them. Wouldn't fuck them. Very respectful of those people because, you know, they, they're they the fucking important ones that really matter. The people that come back every day. And, you know, I, obviously there are lots of guys who do that with me, but there was zero chance of me fucking you guys because I like pussy. So you're not, you're not included in that, you know, uh... Risk analysis, you know? There's lots of people that come to my shows and shit. I would never fuck them. But that being said, when I was single, hell yeah, I fucked a few girls that liked my shit. All consensually, all legal. They weren't super fans, but they saw what I did. They thought I was cool. I thought they were cool. We did that shit. I don't see the issue with that. I don't see, I mean, I was, look, I was a lot less fucking successful. I wasn't a millionaire. I was some cunt on Facebook wearing a hoodie saying cunt. I don't know. I think that that whole fucking power imbalance shit is insane. Because if we're going to be canceling any famous person who fucks someone who isn't famous, hey, every rapper has to go. Every one of them talks about fucking fans. Fucking groupies. Every rock star, gone. Am I crazy in thinking if they're adults and it's consensual, I don't see the issue? Just because you're famous, what? You can only fuck famous people? Dude, that's not fair for people like me. You think if I ever get to Kevin Hart's status, I'm going to be able to fuck J-Lo? No. The more famous you get, the hotter the famous people you're surrounded by. Just because I'm famous doesn't mean I can fuck a model, bro. That's not fair. If I get to the top and I become A-list and I'm a millionaire, I have to st still going to fuck sevens. That's my life. That's my burden. There's a lot of famous people that aren't incredibly hot. Do you think they're fucking the models? No. That Leo is. I don't know. I Look, if you're 22 and you had sex with Chris D'Elia, if it was consensual, there's nothing wrong with that. Have some water. Now, that being said, I think Chris D'Elia is a fucking creep. Someone wrote the funniest shit on Twitter. They go... <laughs> they go... Wow... Chris D'Elia got accused of this, this, and that. It's crazy. It's always the first person you suspect. <laughs> but, man, real real shame. I, I really enjoyed his podcast. Um, and, uh, if, you know, if those ladies are telling the truth, and, you know, there is a chance they could be lying. It's screenshots, but that shit's easier to fake. Um, if, but if it did happen, I, f I feel for them, and, and they're very brave for coming forward, and that's a, that's a fucking shame that that shit happened. Um I, yeah, I, I saw D Delia releasing a bunch of emails as well, like, because the girls didn't release the full emails. There was one case where he asked their age and then he fucked off. They said 17 and he fucked off as you should be doing. Um, but there was, there was one where they were flirting and then she hit him with the 17 and then the only other email they, Chris puts this email in his statement. And the only other email they put back is her hitting him up at 21 going, Hey, we should have sex. It's like, uh, just because she wants to fuck you as an adult doesn't mean you didn't fuck her at seven, late 17. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's all, it's all up in the air. I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn the dude a hundred percent. But I am very comfortable saying that the shit that he was doing is very fucking creepy and should be treated with uh, a lot of suspicion. You know, if you're 30 and hitting on freshly 18-year-olds or chicks that aren't even 18-year-old yet and your conversation doesn't start with, show me a license, 
sus. That to me is like trying to fuck a 16 year old and then going, Oh, I didn't know. It's like, yeah, but you didn't ask. I don't know. Weird shit, bro. The point is, if you laughed at Hey Ching Chong, Wing Wong, Shami, you King Kong, Ding Dong, you're a racist. Oh, man. What else did I want to talk about today? Where's my fucking phone? Oh, my God. It's gone. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, also, uh, my emails were down. So I don't know if miscellaneous bit at the end is going to go ahead this episode because I didn't have emails for a week and I didn't notice. I just launched my new website, which, by the way, check out my website, loosespears.com. Uh, I've put so much effort into relaunching it. I think it looks fucking awesome. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, I'll talk about that. So I relaunched my website and, uh, I've moved it to a different platform just to make it so much easier for people to use and to make it easier for people to grab shit that they like. So, uh, it's loosebeers.com, same URL. It hasn't like changed or anything. Uh, but what's awesome about it is previously my old fucking website with my comedy special and then my physical merch, like my tour merch and shit like that. They were being sold, even though they were on the same website, they were being sold on different platforms. So I use Gumroad for for the special because it has video, uh, but I but I couldn't use Gumroad for my other merch because it just didn't... They, and then I had this issue where, if say, if somebody wanted a fucking T-shirt, but then they also wanted the special for five bucks, they couldn't do that in one transaction because the... the the merch was in one currency on one seller and then the special was in another on another and it didn't fucking work and it took me ages to try and like build this technology that enabled me to uh, still stream my special on my website and without DRM and all that kind of bullshit that I fucking hate to make it easy and to make it cheap uh, for people to just support my comedy and watch my special uh, but also be able to grab something else that, that they liked and I finally fucking worked it out. It took me like three, it took me like six months of research and then three weeks of actually building the fucking thing. Did it all myself uh, but finally now I just have one website uh, with one currency, uh, with one shipping rate, no processing fee, no tax, all that fucking bullshit. It just works. So now, if you want a poster and the special, you can do that. Awesome. Or if you just want one thing, whatever. Go check it out. I would love your feedback, loosespears.com. Honestly, even if you're not going to buy anything, I mean, obviously, I'd love you to fucking buy something. But if you don't, just jump on the website, have a little browse around, give me your feedback, leave it in the comments of this video. I'm going to come back and read it in a few days. I'd love to know your feedback because it's uh, really important to me that I've done this website properly because I want it to be, you know, the fucking landing page. When you go to, I want it to be like the one stop shop for me. If you want my special, you can grab my special. If you want merch, if you want to listen to the podcast, podcast you can do it on that page if you want to buy tickets you do it on that page my fucking mailing list all that kind of shit it's so hard to build did it all myself uh so i'd love feedback on it just jump on there have a browse on your pc on your fucking mobile as well and let me know about your experience if you don't like something tell me if you do like something tell me uh because you know you and i we build this shit together okay unless you laughed at ching chong wing wong king kong ding dong in that case you're a racist and, and you need to resign, okay? And then I and then and then if you don't have a job, right, uh, then you can't give me money, and and then you're useless to me, you know. So you know that, and that's what I'm trying to. That's what the core message of the end of this podcast is. If you're broke like I am, you're useless to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Shout out to all my broke soldiers out there. You'll get there. You'll get out of there one day, bro. I'm trying to work my way out of that. What else did I want to talk about? Um, where are we? Uh, oh, that's, that's right. Dude, this, how crazy is this fucking mixer shit? I love this stuff, man. Dude, can I just, can we all just say well done to Ninja? Well done to Ninja, the scam king. Scam king. Let's, let's just give it up right now, Scam King. As we all know, right, on the Spearhead Sundays podcast, we love to chase the bag. We see the bag, we, we have to chase after that shit. And the, the one thing that we love just as much as chasing the bag is seeing other people catch the bag and chase the bag. The one thing that we hate on this show is bag blockers. Oh, why did you promote Raid Shadow Legends? They have pay-to-win tactics. Don't download it then, bro! 
Let me fucking pay my rent, cunt. Dude, I I saw I, this shit. You know why I do sponsorships? You saw the Belle Delphine video that I did that I put so much effort into that I have an employee, Keelan, working with me to create, putting money, time, effort, and love into creating a comedic video about a controversial topic, and then we put it out, and it gets 200,000 views, and it fucking bangs, and then it gets, you know, uh, uh, heaps of feedback and positive feedback. My channel starts going great. and was, oh, my God, I love this shit, right? You know why I do a brand deal? Because I looked at my fucking analytics of that video, 200,000 fucking views, and I see the revenue it made, and I see $22.00. $22 from 200,000 views and then I get hit with a fucking copyright claim from the record label who didn't make Belle Delphine's song. They made fucking the instrumental of the song that she was parodying. They, they fucking typed it into YouTube and manually claimed it. An employee did that for them. A partial claim. So now that $22 I'm making, guess what? Now it's 11 so you know why I get so angry when people ask me why I do brand sponsorships, especially when I can't do any fucking shows during COVID-19? It's because when I get 200,000 views, I make 11 fucking dollars after paying an employee to sit there for an entire workday to make that, I see $11. That's why when cunts make fun of me and get angry when I advertise a fucking mobile app that they don't have to download, hey, bro, I made $11 today. How much do you make at work? All right? That's what I spent, and I made $11, and that's why we love Raid Shadow Legends here, and that's why we love it when people secure the fucking bag. Ninja, let's just say, man, well done. Incredible fucking scene. So if you're, if you're not up to speed, Ninja, biggest Twitch streamer in the world, uh, and then all of a sudden this new platform shows up called Mixer. It's owned by Microsoft, a live streaming competitor. They launch, and then they, they pay Ninja a reported... 30 to $50 million to move from Twitch. That's like me moving. That's like PewDiePie moving from YouTube to some unknown website owned by, you know, a big company, right? 30 to $50 million for a multi-year deal. So, I mean, let's, it's Ninja probably like three, three to five years, I'd say, you know, just guessing because it's all whatever. 30 to, 30 to $50 million, let's call it $40 million, right? $40 million for five years, okay? Generational wealth. That's, but it's a big gamble, you know? Your, your career is doing this well, the best in the game, absolute elite, and then you jump over to an unknown platform. You have no idea how it's going to go. You know you're going to take a huge dip in, list, in viewership. I mean, fuck, you don't even know if their website works well. If it doesn't work well, it doesn't matter how good your stream is, no cunt's going to watch it. So it's a big risk, but you take it because we chase the bag here, and that's what we love at Spearhead Sundays, you know? It's chasing the bag. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, after eight months of Mixer being this platform and Ninja streaming on Mixer, Mixer goes under and Ninja is now released from his contract and he makes them pay him every fucking cent that he's owed. So now, guys, what's happened is Mixer went under and then formed a partnership with Facebook Gaming and they reportedly offered Ninja double the initial deal of $40 million to jump over to Facebook Gaming and Ninja says, no, fuck you, pay me my money, I'm a free agent. So he gets his $40 million fucking dollars for doing no work, eight months of his what would be probably a three to five year deal. He does eight months of it. The whole fucking stream, streaming platform collapses. Not even collapses. It's still around. They're partnering with Facebook Gaming. 
So Mixer is going to become Facebook Gaming. But Ninja looks at his contract and he go and they go, "Hey guy, hey Ninja, um here's what happened." They go, "Hey Ninja, so uh, Mixer, we're not going under, uh, obviously. We're just partnering up with Facebook Gaming and we're changing our name to Facebook Gaming. So we would love uh, all the work you're doing here is great. Um, we we know we promised you 40 million dollars. What we would like to do is uh, we would like to uh, up that amount to 80 million dollars and then we'd love for you to just finish your contract it's just going to be called facebook gaming and ninja looks at them and he puts on his blue hair ninja wig and he, and he pulls up his contract and he goes huh, i don't see the word facebook gaming in this contract and they go well it, it's 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 still you know we're just partnering oh all i see is mixer is it going to be called mixer and they go no no it's not called mixer it's just going to be called facebook gaming and he goes i don't see facebook gaming in this contract so guess what and then he rips it up pay me my fucking money i am out and then he gets his $40 million for doing none of the fucking work that he promised this multi-million dollar corporation that he was going to do, right? And now he's in a position where not only does he have $40 million in his fucking pocket, not only is he a free agent leaving his deal years before he was supposed to, he also has a written record of Facebook gaming offering him $80 million that he can now take to YouTube, to Twitch, to every other streaming platform and be like, my name is Ninja and I cost $80 million to join your platform. Who's going to fucking pay for it? And now he'll go back to Twitch or YouTube gaming, the wealthiest, most popular streamer on the fucking planet. Scam King. Now, a lot of people are criticizing my, my use of the word scam. He didn't lie. He didn't do this, whatever. Guys, if you manage to get $40 million from a multinational company without doing any of the fucking work, and then when they change their name, you refuse to work with their new name and pocket $40 million... You are a scam king, and that is not an insult. That's a title. Ninja Scam King. Congratulations, mate. I've never seen I've never seen a better example of a man chasing the fucking bag and taking advantage of these multinational corporations that don't pay tax. That's your tax, Microsoft. Suck me. That's awesome. Incredible. That is fucking brilliant. And ladies and gentlemen, that's where I'm going to fucking end the podcast. I don't have any emails. I just checked. Um, if you did send me an email in the past like 10 days, resend it because I would not have received it. So just go to your sent, copy, paste, send it to me again. Um, and that goes for any of my emails. If you have a, you know, a business inquiry, if you have an inquiry about merch that you've ordered, I actually would not have got any emails in the past 10 days because I changed my website and then I forgot that my website was hosting my email or whatever bullshit, okay? Check out loosespears.com, brand new website and have a scroll through. Grab some merch if you want. That's how I uh, support what I'm doing because I made $11 from that Belle Delphine video and I haven't had a brand sponsor in about two months. So, woo! Um... I will talk to you guys next Sunday. Support me on Patreon if you want early access to everything that I do. You want to support the show and join the Discord community of fucking bag chasers. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys uh, sticking with me and sharing my shit. Last month uh, was my best month uh, ever uh, on YouTube without having like a crazy viral uh, hit, which does happen. But I, I, I tend to, you can't count on viral, um, but you can count on an audience coming back, watching every video that you put up. And when, sh when the channel's going well, when nothing is going viral, that's how you really know that uh, the community is growing. This podcast is uh, getting really big now. We've got like 10,000 listeners every single episode. We're really growing the Spearhead Sunday's community. And uh, man, I, I, I think, I truly think that we're building something special here. There's, there's not many other fucking podcasts that would say all that wild shit about Jenna Marbles. No cunts have the balls to even repeat what she got cancelled for. I'm making jokes about it. I'm trying to bring funny to you guys throughout all this bullshit, all corona and all this fucking shit that's happening in the world. I'm trying to, you know, shine some light into the darkness and I'm not going to hold back on the jokes. And, you know, I might suffer for that. 
revenue wise but uh this is what i truly feel passionate about is bringing real comedy to you guys and uh to have an audience that stands up for that shit supports it and understands that you know you got to chuck in some coin every now and then for to to support that audacious humor um is all i can ask for so if you enjoy this stuff, man, jump on the Patreon. We're trying to grow that shit. Join the Discord community. It's uh, it's really happening, man, and I, I fucking love this shit. I'm in such a good space. Uh, I'm feeling so creatively fulfilled, and I'm really, really grateful that that uh, this shit just is, is growing and continuing on. It's really, really special. 200 episodes, man. Uh, isn't that fucking cool? 201. Uh, I'll see you guys next Sunday. I'm Lewis Spears. I honestly, truly, truly hope from the bottom of my heart that you have a shit one. And before I go, the reason why um, Dr. Disrespect was banned from Twitch is because... Oh, oh, oh.